Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you've clicked on this video, it's because you're interested in developing your child or student's mind to its fullest potential. You've definitely come to the right place because in today's lesson, we're going to see how we take a child from building just a simple bridge to being able to engineer a complex bridge system. Now, although this lesson is specific to engineering the habits, the skills, and the mindsets that we're going to develop in the child today can be used across a variety of subjects and in any career field that a child may be interested in for the future. So let's go ahead and deep dive into this lesson, which can be modified for any age in any grade level. I want to start off by saying I'm using Picasso tiles here because that's what you all requested, but you can use any materials you can find around the house, sand, paper, pencils, anything. The first thing we're going to do is start off by posing a problem to the child or student. So here's the problem that I'm posing to a Piway. We live in a national park that is overpopulated by deer. That causes a problem not only for humans, but for the deer, because when they run across the roadways, they end up getting hit. And it's not just the deer. We have fox and we have other wildlife who we see deceased on the side of the road because they have no way to go around the humans. They must go through and over top of our roads in order to get from point A to point B. So how do we solve this problem? Well, some people have suggested building a bridge. And so what I'm doing today is I'm posing to a P-Way, hey, if we did make a bridge to go from one side of our state park to the other side in certain places, or if we built several bridges, how would we do that? What would that look like? Now, please modify this lesson to make it culturally appropriate and place based. If you live in a city, perhaps you can talk about building a pedestrian bridge. So after you pose the problem, you're going to go ahead and let the child add it. It's kind of like writing a paper where you just write your first draft and you just write out all of your thoughts, see what they come up with. Now, there could be some frustration here or really at any point in this exercise, but especially if the child isn't used to being pushed or isn't used to experiencing failure. Gentle encouragement such as, wow, you did it, keep going. You can get those tiles to stick, come on, that's right. Those simple words can really encourage a child who does not yet have that full growth mindset or who is not used to working with that material to keep going and persevere. Someone put one in the middle. Sure. Put a what in the middle? Okay. Yeah, one of those left to hold it. What is this? A square. Okay. I'll stay there. It's other ones. It's okay. It's okay. Older children are more likely to develop frustration a bit later in the task. So what you can do with them is you can start questioning them. What are you stuck on? What are you thinking you need? Have them express in words exactly what they're thinking so that you can ask them more questions that allow them to help themselves. You might ask them, where can you find more information on how to stabilize that curve in your object? How can you visualize your plan to see if it would work? Older children can take on more sophisticated steps in solving this problem. So just keep that in mind as we go throughout this exercise. Maybe there can be a red light. You put a red light here? Yeah. But some places we can't put a red light. So here we see the first attempt at the bridge and we're going to start pushing their thinking and challenging their minds here. So kids are going to give all sorts of solutions at first that aren't necessarily wrong but we'll want to assess if it realistically solves the problem. This will be the crossover. Now the cars come, this means cars stop. And then when the deer, and when the deer is trying to pass by and the deer is gone, the cars cross. Well, I don't understand. Can you show me? Yes. So here's the car. Okay. I hear the police officer. I don't need a police officer. And this is the deal crossing. Okay. And then. But how can the. Okay, you yeah. Open it. Oh, I see. There you go, car. Oh, I see. So there's something that. There's something that when the deer want to cross, it closes? Yes. But how do we know when the deer want to cross? So what we're doing here is we're giving feedback that asks them to think more while guiding them to the understanding that there is no way you can get out of building this bridge. 
yes, perhaps we can have a drone on one side that picks up every animal that comes by and puts them down on the other side. But the task here is to build a bridge. And that's not unlike the task they will be assigned to as adults when there is a specific solution to a problem that somebody wants to use. And your goal is not to tell them, no, this isn't the solution you want. Your goal is to build them that bridge because they want that bridge and we need to make it to their specifications. This is the deer. How does it, how does it go? It goes Where does it go? Right here. It jumps over. It jumps on here. It steps and then it walks, 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 walks. That's excellent. Now, can I also say something for a second? Look, look, look. How do you have it right now? Look at my car. I can't get through. So you stabilized it here so now the deer can get through. But now the car can't get through because the squares that you use to stabilize the side are there. So we have to find a way to let the cars through. Maybe um, this can be the mall. What do you mean? This can be the mall. Well, we're not talking about the mall. We're talking about building a bridge so the deer can get across. Try again. Come on. You can do it. Think of another way. What, how can we change baby. this? We don't need to baby. Now, here comes the really hard step, the hardest steps for both educators, parents, and students. You let them struggle. Sit on your hands, close your mouth. The biggest mistake you can make here is telling the child how to do this. And I see so often with teachers and with parents, you just want to say, no, 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 that's not right. Just put this here. Don't do that. You're not teaching them. They're not creating on their own. If you step in and tell them how to do something, they are dropping down from being creators to just being imitators. La, 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 la. Nice! We made it! And the deer can go across too. Oh, oh. It's okay. It's not strong enough. The deer fell down and died. So, we saw that it worked for a second. Yeah. It worked for a second, but then the bridge collapsed with the weight of the deer on it. So it looks like we have to make it stronger. How can we make our bridge a little bit stronger? Yeah. So you can make observations such as, I see you keep putting your hand here, P.U.A. Why are you doing that? Can you design a feature that solves your problem without having your hand being there? Because your hand is not going to be there to hold up that bridge. And remember that the words you are saying now will be the ones that they repeat in their heads when they go off to solve problems on their own and when they're playing alone. Why else? What else is different from this piece than this piece that you had? Because this piece are wobbly and this piece are hard. Right, so how do you make this side as hard as that side? Um, you get another one and put the one on the bottom and then you put it on and you see if it's on a lot. So you're saying put another piece on the bottom? She's saying put another piece on the bottom here. Let's see. That will work. Next, here you see a mache coming in and offering her two cents and trying to help out here. And I want you to keep in mind that engineers and creators work in groups. Everything we see around us was created by group work. So I want you to alternate letting your child work with the group and working solo because there are benefits and downfalls to both. When we think about solo work, the child has more time to think, they can develop that solo growth mindset, they have more time to develop their personal skills. When you work with a group, sometimes there can be less frustration, sometimes there can be more depending on the child, but a lot of the time there's just a greater share of more ideas, different ideas, more diverse ideas, and that leads to less frustration. They can learn from their peers and then you just have that group think that one person does something that sparks something else in your mind. So you're definitely going to want to go back and forth, letting your child work solo to working with the group. Now, you may not be able to do that in a 20 or 30 minute session, and that's really thinking longer term. Once you are having strong enough so the pony can cross, you let me know, okay? The pony needs to cross, and the cars need to go under, okay? okay. All right, good work. Let me know. All right, put her there. Hold her there. And let me take this. Here's the test. Boom! I want to come through. Can I come through straight? Yeah. Yeah! Hey, you did it, girl! Yeah! 
So finally we have the solution. And here p -Way said, mommy, I did this all by myself. And what an amazing confidence booster this is. Letting a child or a student see this huge mountain that they have to tackle and struggling through it and finally finding the solution to that. I have seen that this type of activity and this growth mindset boosts the self-esteem of students and that alone leads to higher achievement. So to recap, in order to develop an engineering type mind in your child, you want to pose a problem, allow them to struggle, encourage and question, alternate individual and group think appropriately, and finally see it through to the finish. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. What do you all want to see next? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to head on over to our community tab and especially follow me on Instagram.